Hey folks. Now, I would love if every single one of you could intimately understand all the different aspects of Earth's 12,000 year disaster cycle uh, in the way that it has been presented. When you actually can wrap your head around literally everything and how it all fits together from different angles, it eliminates all doubt as to what's happening. It gives, as, as horrifying as the situation is, it gives a sense of peace in knowing. And as much as this can be done by either getting our books and reading the books or by watching the entire playlist, I do realize that may be a tall order in some respects. So what I wanna do is quickly go over what I would say is an outline of the topics in the disaster cycle. And what I would love for you guys to do is after you've watched it, comment down below on which items you want to see me dive deeper on in the most quick, concise way possible to get to fill in some of the gaps on your knowledge. Because me sitting here on this side, it's hard for me to really know where those gaps are. So um, let's just go through some of these, some of these here. So I would consider part one would be um, learning about the history of this disaster because that's really where you can develop an understanding of the fact that there's a cycle. Um, the main one is 12,000 years. Uh, this is not only in um, a lot of mythology, it's described in different religious texts. There's the physical evidence. Um, a large portion of that is geomagnetic, the geomagnetic excursions. The, the big ones anyway. And a lot of it is other kinds of physical Im, uh, evidence of, of cyclical impactors, um, shifting magnetic poles, uh, cold onset, Nova level isotopes, things like that. So the evidence of these things happening in cycles over time really helps you understand that, okay, there is a cycle and therefore it's not unreasonable to think it's going to happen again. Uh, part of that is understanding the 6,000 and 1,500 year cycles as well, the Heinrich cycles and the Dansgaard Oscar cycles, um, effectively, uh, and how they relate to major solar flare cycles and how they all work together. Uh, and we are actually, after that recent article about uh, the, excur the magnetic excursion they found uh, about 6,000 years ago, we really can say that there is at least a minor geomagnetic event that happens about every 6,000 years, even if the bigger, more prominent ones are on the 12,000 year uh, scale. So that would be section one. Section two would be Earth's ongoing disaster. This would be the evidence that, okay, that cycle that we now have in our heads is happening again right now. Uh, pretty sure the shift began in 1859. That would be when the galactic current sheet arrived. It was not only when the Carrington event happened on the sun, uh, which would have been one of the things you might expect to be triggered, but it was when the Earth's magnetic field began to weaken and Earth's magnetic poles began to shift. Uh, around the year 2000, the shift began to really accelerate and it's been accelerating further and further. Uh, we're seeing all different kinds of evidence for that, not only that generalization I just made, but the fact that the South Pole is now speeding up and the fact that we are getting deeper particle penetration, causing things like changes to polar mesospheric echoes, the appearance of aurora, the disruption level to the ionosphere, and several things down here in the stratosphere and, and, and the troposphere as well. Um, again, there, there, there's changes pretty much all throughout the Earth layers, ozone, uh, obviously up at the magnetosphere. We have things like lightning that we can look at. Um, not to mention that we can look at Earth's rotation changes and actually make uh, make some inferences of, you know, from those as well. The fact that Earth is pretty much rotating faster than it has in any of our lives and faster than it has on record. Um, all of these things really can, can tell us a lot about what's happening right now and how we can sort of connect the dots to that being another one of those cycles unfolding as we speak. Uh, another thing that we can do is learn about how, okay, this is because of something galactic and we use that, uh, the way we get there is by looking at the fact that it is a solar system shift. Um, I won't go through all of these, but there are changes on all of the planets, probably Mercury as well, but we, we, we don't have that data yet. We won't have that until Bepi Colombo arrives. But all the other planets that we've been monitoring in this way have shown changes. 
And these are changes that are related to things on Earth we already know can be affected by Earth's magnetic field, its interaction with solar activity, and to see those changes on the other planets, it sort of implies, okay, they're having a magnetic change too. It is an entire solar system shift of an electromagnetic nature. Um, we've seen this on the sun as well. The sun's chemistry is changing, its magnetic fields are changing. And of course we have the dust surplus. Uh, there's more interplanetary dust. Uh, the zodiac light uh, that comes from the dust is higher than they would have otherwise expected, higher than it was in the past. And the outside atmosphere, the upper atmosphere of the sun is getting dustier as well. And so this puts perspective into what's happening right now as another indication uh, that not only the cycle is happening, but it's happening on a very grand scale. Uh, next would be some of the specifics about the galactic astrophysics, how we know that it is the galactic current sheet. Um, this is part of the Taurus jet sheet model that they are now coming to realize is a very real thing. Um, we know, you know, they've actually done a pretty good job actually spotting the galactic current sheet. They don't call it that necessarily, uh, but we know about the scale, the size, the speed of the waves as they're moving out from the galactic center. Uh, we know how thick they are. We know the amplitude, uh, everything like that, the, the wavelength. Um, galactic observations, we see it in the dust. We see it in the photon light, specifically in the gamma range. Uh, and we see it in other galaxies too, uh, in their ripples and their magnetic fields, not to mention the overall setup of the Milky Way galaxy's magnetic field implies that that wavy current sheet exists coming out from the center. Um, and then of course, there's some of the other more recent studies that show how observations and physical models from the past of the galaxy have never matched up. In order to make our observational reality, what we actually look out and see, match any kind of model, you need something like micronova or super flares happening on a fantastically uh, abundant scale, if I can put it that way. Uh, otherwise, there's no way to re-inject that energy and sustain uh, what they sometimes call the buoyancy of the wave, but essentially the, the energy of the wave as it goes throughout the system. Uh, next, this would be about the solar micronova itself. Um, the fact that modern nova science is slowly moving towards the idea that the sun can produce one of these. Basically, everything they knew about nova has changed in the last just couple uh, just couple of years. Um, not to mention the fact that after we were called insane for even saying micronova could be a thing, they came out last year and actually said, oh, by the way, we've discovered micronova are a thing. Wonder where they heard that. Um, the galactic current sheet, which from the last section we know must exist and which we can imply is having an impact on the entire solar system from the section previous to that, the actual nature of it in terms of its chemistry and its electromagnetism actually delivers the two known ways to actually trigger recurring nova at stars. There are two ways they know how to do it, a powerful magnetic kick and an accretion, a dumping of material onto the star. Both of those things are expected to happen with the galactic current sheet. And so we have Nova science moving in this direction. We have the galactic current sheet delivering both of the known mechanisms to make a solar micronova happen. And a solar micronova is actually the only way to explain all of the evidence that we see in these cycles. Impactors can't do that. Nothing else can do that. It has to affect Earth's magnetic field. It has to affect volcanoes worldwide, climate worldwide, the extinctions of species. And it has to be able to produce impactors as well and produce nova level isotopes. That last one kind of is the icing, the cherries and the candles on the cake there. So um, last but not least, we have uh, some of the more specifics about what's going on now and some of the things we expect when things get really bad, when we get to the zenith of the disaster sometime in the late 2030s or 2040s, um, how the low velocity zones unlock, how the LLSVPs, the internal structure of the earth is actually related to things like mantle heaving, how the earth is actually going to tilt, um, how the three days of darkness that we hear about in several different religious and mythological uh 
references is absolutely what we would expect right before the solar micronova. There's a shell that accumulates and then that blasts off in, in the great solar flash. Um, the unbelievable number of coincidences with where the new poles are going to be. Not only have several ancient books described where the new poles are going to be, but we know from Einstein's math and several other people's math, if you're one of those Einstein haters, he's not the only one, about how the earth will tilt if you could unlock the crust. It would put the poles in the exact place that these people 200 years ago, 300 years ago, we're saying the new poles would be. That's a crazy coincidence. And it just so happens that where the North and South magnetic poles are set to meet is one of those new poles. And if the other one just pops out the other side of Earth, that's the other one. Too many coincidences to ignore there. Um, stuff about the continental sized tsunamis pushing giant blocks, creating surge deposits like what was recently found uh, in Alaska and which have been found in several places around the world. Um, plus some other things about uh, what to do in the aftermath, um, what best to do right now during the major event and then in the aftermath as we're trying to restart the new age of Earth. Essentially, these are how I would break up everything relating to the disaster and what we are going through and what we are going towards right now. And so what I would love for you to do um, Go back through if you need to, but comment down below, and I will take these into consideration based on abundance and what people are saying most, where I need to focus on to fill in those gaps for you so you can you can feel the way I feel in terms of peace and serenity despite the terribleness of what's going to happen in terms of knowing, the certainty of understanding the past and what's happening now and what's going to happen in the future. I'll be looking at those comments and I will see you in the morning for the daily show. Be safe, everyone.